Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, today we're going to carry on doing quadratic word problems. So that's what we ended with last time. And then we're going to move on to quadratic inequalities and we'll see how the day goes. I've got other stuff that I could possibly do with you guys. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so quadratic word problems are basically word problems that have what two variables and there are steps to follow that will help you solve it. Now I've gone through these steps before, but just in case you've missed it, let's talk about how to solve a word problem. Oh, by the way, while I've got you here, if you guys have ever missed a lesson or you want to go back and check, then all you have to do is go through to, to an ABLE platform and you'll see all the lessons listed there and you go and click on them as if you were going to click on them like you would join that lesson for the first time and you will see a recording of the lesson. Similarly, if you're watching this live now and you want to, maybe you missed something or I did something too quickly or you want to go check it, then you're welcome to go and go exactly the same method that you got to used to get here. You go back through that method again and you'll receive a recording of this video. Right, so let's talk about how to solve a word problem. These are steps that we need to follow. First of all, you need to read the problem carefully. Seriously, guys, you have to read the problem carefully. The number of times I have students that can't do a problem and they struggle, struggle, struggle. And then I say to them, what is the problem? They go, oh, they don't even what X is. And actually they do. That person just hasn't read carefully. Secondly, highlight what we have to solve for. I would like to stress that feel free to use highlighters, pencils, um, colored pencils, all sorts of things in the exams. Obviously, it'd be better if you made these marks on the question paper, not on the answer sheet, but highlight what you have to solve for so that you can actually make sure that you know what you're aiming at. Assign variables to unknown values, so you can let something be X or let something be Y. Then translate it into an algebraic expression. For example, X plus Y equals 3. Okay, we'll work through these examples now. Set up a system of equations and then solve, and then obviously you always check your solution. Always check your solution. Just, even if it's just to make sure that it makes sense. Okay, so, and then obviously you write down the final answer. So <laughs> let's try a couple of examples. So it says Sylvester has played a few games of darts. Okay, he's played a few games of darts. In the third game, Sylvester scored 80 more than in the second game. Okay. In the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than in the third game. His total score for the first two games was 208. And if he wants an average score of 146, what must his score be on the fourth game? Hmm, okay. So let's do the steps. It said read it carefully, which we did. Now it says highlight what they want and they want to know what must the score be on the fourth game? What must the score be on the fourth game? Okay, so the best way to do this is actually to make a little table and see what we have and what we don't have. And sorry, I do want black. So we've got first game. Okay, second game, third game, fourth game, and then average. Okay, right. And do you agree that the average, to get the average, what do we need to do? We have to add all of these and then divide by four, and then divide by four, okay? So we know that the average already they've told us is 146, 146. And again, what I'd like to suggest you do is that you maybe tick off in pencil the stuff that you use, the information that you've used, so that you can actually work out where you're going. Okay, now let's see. It says the third game Sylvester call, call scored 80 more than in the second game. Okay, so in other words, this is the second game. In the third game, he scored 80 more. Okay, I'm going to put X and Y's in a minute, okay? In the first game, he scored 180 less than the third game. And the first two scores of the first two games was 208. Okay, so let's let something be X. Let's let something be X. Shall we let the second game be X? Let's let the second game be X. Do you agree that the third game is third game is 80 more than the second game? 
The third game is 80 more than the second game. So I'm letting X be the second game. Okay. If that's the case, then the third game is 80 more than the second game, so it's 80 plus X, right? Now it says, in the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than the third game. So the first game equals the third game minus 110. But what is the third game? The third game is 80 plus X. So do you agree that's 80 plus X minus 110, which becomes X minus 30, okay? So therefore, do you agree the third game is X minus 30, okay? Then it says the score of the first two games was 208. These two add up to 208. Oh, okay, so we can do that then. This is quite cool. We can get equations. We can go x minus 30 plus x equals 208. So do you agree we could actually solve for x right now? Right now we could solve for x because we've got x minus 30 plus x equals 208. So therefore we've got 2x minus 30 is equal to 208. Sorry, I was thinking ahead. Therefore, 2x is going to be 208 minus plus 30, because remember you take it across, it becomes a plus. So 2x is equal to 238. So x is going to be 100 and 1, remainder 1, and 9, 119. Okay, so x is 119. So now we can solve for this. Now this becomes easy because, so what we're going to do is let the fourth game be y. Okay. So we're going to let the fourth game be y, just so that it's not x, right? So you agree we can now fill numbers in, okay? So I can do, well, if that's the case, the first game is going to be 119 minus 30. Okay, 119 minus 30. So if you want, we can take out our calculators. Just to be sure, I know you guys, you guys in the exams, you check everything on your calculator. If you could, you check one plus one equals two. So we're gonna go 119 minus 30 and you get 89. So the first game is 89. Obviously the second game is just X. So that is 119. The third game is 80 plus 119, which is 199, right. And now they said the average score must be 146. What must be the score of the fourth game? So what do we need to do? We need to add the 89, the 119, the 199, and the Y, divide it all by four, and we get 146. So I can do that. So let's do it with purple. I can go 89 plus 119 plus 199 plus y all divided by 4 is equal to 146. Okay, so let's simplify this by adding these three numbers together. So we're going to go 89 plus 119 plus 199 equals 407. So we've got 407 plus y over 4 equals 146. So therefore, do you agree that y is going to be 146 times by 4 minus 407? Okay, how do I get that? Well, I'm taking the 4 across, okay, and then I'm subtracting this big total here of 407. So let's go back and we're going to go, well, we've got 146 times 4 minus 407 equals, oh, that did not work, did it? 146 times 4 equals minus 407 equals, it's 177. So for his fourth game, he got a score of 177. So grade 11, I hope that you've realized now that 
You can easily do these sums as long as you take them in baby steps and you lay them out. Okay, and it's very, very, you are very much allowed to lay it out and draw pictures like I've done and put things down in tables. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's a very good method to do it. So as long as you explain what you're doing, and obviously I have used red, I've used green, I've used purple. Guys, as long as you explain what you're doing and you write it out neatly, the teacher will be happy. Okay, let's do another example. It says an annual train ticket costs a thousand rand for a single person. Okay, so we've got one person here and it costs him a thousand rand, right? For the family, yes, the dude, and we'll make it Bob, Sim Bob Simpson. So, you know, she's got lots of hair, the mommy. And then there's Bart with less hair. And then, okay, you get the gist. Okay, and the baby. Right, so the family ticket is 1,000. 500 Marge, Marge Simpson. I've forgotten what the purple head woman was called. Okay, the train ticket for both the single and the family are increased by the same amount. Okay, now a single ticket price costs five sevenths of a family ticket. What was the price increase? What are we doing? We have two. Once we've read the question, we need to highlight and we want to highlight in yellow. So it says, What was the price increase? That's what we want to know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let something be X and I'm going to let this be X is be the price increase. The price, the price increase, I'm going to let the price increase be X. Okay, because what did they say? They said that the ticket price was increased the same. Same amount. This was increased by X and this was increased by the X. But now what do they say? They say, how are these related? Now it says that the single person ticket is five sevenths of the family ticket. In other words, I can say 1000 plus X is equal to five sevenths of the 1500 plus X. Okay. It's five sevenths of that. Okay. You understand that, okay? This single ticket is five sevenths of the family ticket. The family ticket was 1500 Rand, but now they've increased it by X. So now what are we going to do? We're obviously going to solve for X. So the first thing we have to do is multiply out this bracket, okay? So we've got 1000 plus X is equal to five, oh, sorry, five times 1500 over 7 plus remember you multiply it across so it becomes 5x over 7 so then what does this become it becomes 1000 i know i'm doing this slowly guys if you understand how to do this feel free to work ahead of me and then make sure that you get the right answers okay but if not then just watch slowly and be watch what the how to do it and then obviously you want to make sure you don't make mistakes when you're doing it. Remember, you always want to press your SD button. So it's 1,071 and 43 cents, round off to two decimal places. So it's 1,071 rand and 43 cents. 1,071 and 43 plus 5x over 7. Another thing I'd like to say is while I work now. Guys, while I'm working, I'm just going to take all the numbers to the one side and all the x's to the other side, okay? If you are cool with this stuff, then that's great. Awesome. But if you're not and you're struggling, then again, what I'd like to suggest you do is you watch now, but then come back a bit later and try these questions for yourself. And the best way to do it is actually pause the video at the beginning of the question. See if you can do it by yourself and then watch the video and see if you get it right. Okay. Right. So now we've got 1000 minus 1071. 0.43 is equal to 5x over 7 minus x. So I'm running out of space because I write really big. So I'm going to write over here. It becomes this common denominator 7. So this becomes 5x minus 7x, which becomes minus 2x over 7, is this. Okay, so we're going to put this in, oh, we don't, minus 71, comma 43 is equal to minus 2x over 7. So how do we solve for the x? We can times both sides by 7 over 2, minus 7 over 2, because these cancel 
and these cancel and the minuses cancel. What you do to the one side, you always have to do to the other side. So we times in this by minus 7 over 2 as well. The minuses cancel. So all we want is the 71.43 times by 7 divided by 2. So let's do that. So we got 71.43 times by 7 divided by 2. All equals, always press your AC button, 250,005. So I'm going to say that's 250 Rand. 250,005. If you really want to, you could make that 250,01 cents, but I think that might be a rounding error. Okay, so there you go. That is the price increase. Okay, so again, what did we do? We followed the steps. We read through the question. We underlined the information we needed. We drew some pictures if we needed them. We highlighted what we wanted. We allowed something to be X. We made an equation and then we solved for it. Okay, so there you go. Right, now let us move on to quadratic inequalities. So quadratic inequalities are very important because they actually play a huge role, not just in the fact that they ask you these in quadratic inequalities in every first paper you are going to have from now till the end of the matric, you will have a quadratic inequality. But they also give you a nature of roots. You can use them for um, predicting things with respect to derivatives when you do that in grade 12, etc., etc. So they are very useful. Okay. So the next thing I want to say to you is if you see an inequality, and what is an inequality? An inequality is when you have a smaller than, a greater than, a smaller than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. If you see that, you need to draw a number line. You need to draw a number line. You cannot solve these without a number line. You can. You can solve them without a number line, but you will lose marks and your teacher will be mad and the examiner will be mad. You will lose marks, okay? So you need to draw a number line and there is a reason. When you're doing simple inequalities like this, the number line really doesn't make much difference to your life. But when you're doing more complex inequalities that have got fractions in them, especially in grade 12, then you are actually need that number line to really help you sort out what's going on. So you need a number line. Okay, so let's first of all, draw a number line. So let's draw a number line. There's a number line. You guys, when you're drawing a number line, you need to use a ruler. I don't have snap to grid and I don't have pencils. So I have a squiff line, but you guys will use a ruler. You will use a pencil. And if you make a mistake, you will erase it with an eraser and start again. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is find values for which x is greater than or equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to factorize this. So this is obviously a trinomial, okay? And we want to factorize it. So the, the coefficients of x squared or x are one and one. So it's just x and x, right? This sign here is a plus, which means both signs in the brackets are the same and they're both the middle terms, bracket signs, so it's minus and minus. And now we need factors of six that add up to minus five. So if we think about it, our factors of six are six and one and three and two. But they've got to have the same sign and up to add up to minus five. So it has to be the three and the two. The only way you can get a 5 from a 6 is 6 minus 1 or minus 6 plus 1, which means they've got opposite signs. 3 plus 2 gives me 5 and minus 3 minus 2 gives me minus 5. So therefore, it has to be the 3 and the 2. So that's 3 and that's 2. So what we're really saying with this is that what we're really saying, and I'm just going to erase my number line. I'll put it somewhere else. Okay, what we're really saying is that either x minus 3 is going to be greater than or equal to naught, or x minus 2 is greater than, actually no, that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying that either x minus 3 equals naught, or x minus 2 equals naught, okay? When x equals 3, the whole of this expression will equal naught, right? 
or when x equals 2, the whole of this expression will equal 0. And we call this our markers. These are our markers. Okay, that's what we mark on our number line. So what we're saying is that, and let me prove it to you. If I substitute 3 in here, we get 3 minus 3, 3 minus 2. So 3 minus 3 is 0, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So three, 0 times 1 is 0. So the whole expression is 0. Similarly yeah, 2 minus 2 is going to be 0. And it doesn't matter what that is because 0 times anything is 0. So the two points here are factors make this expression 0. And that's the whole point about factors, really. So what we're saying is that these two points here are our markers on our number line. So if I have to draw my number line here, we've got this point here is 2 and this point here is 3. And when x equals 2, the whole of this is 0. And when x equals 3, the whole of this is 0. Okay. Now, these are numbers, they're not circles. If I had to draw circles, because this says we can be equal to 0, I'd be drawing a closed in circle here because it includes 2 and it includes 3. Okay, remember that closed in circles include the number and open circles do not. This here is my number line and I'm saying that the value of this is zero. Okay, your guys, your teachers may have it the other way. You might have closed in circles here and zeros here. It doesn't matter as long as you understand what we're doing. Okay, now we need to choose a number on this side of the two. We want to choose a number on this side of the two. And I don't know, for some reason, students always go, oh, I'll choose minus six. Guys, zero is on this side of minus two. Let's substitute zero in, okay? It makes it so much easier. So we've got zero minus three, zero minus two. What does that become? It becomes minus three times minus two, which is positive six. We actually don't care what it equals. We just look at it in the sign. And a minus times a minus is a? plus. Okay, okay, I don't really mind if you use minus six, but really substitute minus six into this thing and then whatever, it's just crazy. You want to do this fast and accurately. So now we need to choose a number between two and three. So again, we can choose any number. Let's just go with two and a half. So if we look at this, we've got two and a half minus three and two and a half minus two. 2.5 minus 3, do you agree that that's a negative number? It's minus a half, right? And 2.5 minus 2 is a half, okay? So it's positive. Again, we don't care what the numbers are. We care what the signs are. And this is a minus and this is a plus. And a minus times a plus is a minus, okay? And then finally, we want a number bigger than 3. Any number bigger than 3, I'm just going to choose 4. So I'm going to go 4 minus 3. 4 minus 2, that is a positive, and that is a positive, and therefore that is going to be a positive, right? So therefore, do you agree my number line is looking like this, that we want when is the whole of this expression is greater than or equal to 0. So it has to be all the way along there, everywhere from below 2 and including 2, or above 3 and including 3. So I would say for x is smaller than or equal to 2, or I would say for x is bigger than or equal to 3. Okay, but before we move on, there's another way you can do this question, and I'm going to show it to you now. The one thing to do is that we can realize that this is a trinomial, and a trinomial is a graph of a parabola. So again, we need to factorize it, and we factor it to be x minus 2, x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, and we realize that our markers are 2 and 3. So again, same point, we've got 2 and 3 here. But then, the way we do it is we say, okay, well, this is a parabola, and the coefficient of x squared is 1, which means it's a happy parabola. And what does a happy parabola look like? A happy parabola looks like this. Okay, now the reason I'm showing you this method is because a lot of the teachers go with this method and teach it to you. 
it's cool as long as inequality is a <laughs> trinomial. Otherwise, you have to use the other method, which I'm just showing you. But I'm showing you this so that you don't think that this is not a valid method if you have a trinomial. So this really is showing you, because that's what the factors are. They're the x cuts of the, of the they're the x cuts. So where it cuts the x axis, okay? Do you agree that the whole of this graph, the whole of this, is positive from two onwards and from three onwards that way. So below two, from two and below, it's greater than or equal to zero. And from three and above, it's greater than or equal to zero. So therefore we can again go x has got to be smaller than or equal to two or x is going to be greater than or equal to three. Now that is much easier, I admit it, than substituting numbers in. But the problem is, not all your inequalities are going to be parabolas, which is why I'm hesitant to only teach you this method. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so this is again a parabola, but I'm still going to show you the other way of doing it. Okay, I'll do the first, I'll do the parabola way first quickly, just to make sure you guys know how to do it. And then I'll show you the other way, because the other way is the way that you're going to be using in matric when you get to fractions and things, okay? Or even later this year. So, Let's have a look at it. We know that it has to be factorized. So your factors of 2x squared are 2 and 1. Your factors of 6 are going to be 6 and 1, 1 and 6, 3 and 2, and 2 and 3. Okay, so we've got two brackets, and they're going to be smaller than or equal to 0. We know that this minus tells you the signs are opposite, and the bigger number is a plus. Okay, and we want a difference of one. Okay, that is, always remember that the coefficient of an x or y or whatever is one. So two times one is two and one times six is six. The difference between them is four, it's never gonna happen. Two times six is 12, nope. Two times two is four and one times three is three. That works, yay, so we found it, okay? So let's write that out again, it's two and one and three and two, because remember you always cross multiply. So it's two times two is four, and one times three is three, is gonna give me a difference of one, but we want a positive one. So we want a plus four, two times two is plus four, a minus three, my, three, times one, three times minus three is minus three, okay? And then you write it from left to right. So it goes two x minus three x, plus 2 is small and equal to 0. And then we have to solve both of these for 0 to find out, um, to find out, uh, <laughs> sorry, my boss is chatting to me on the chat line, um, <laughs> to find out um, whether or not you are going to, um, Sorry about that. He's demoing the show, the, the thing, and I think he just wants to check whether or not I'm actually following the messages. Okay, right. So anyway, so you want to find out where this, this thing cuts the x-axis, right? You want to find out where it cuts the x-axis. You need to solve both of these for zero. So let 2x minus 3 equal to zero, or x plus 2 is equal to zero. So therefore, 2x is equal to 3, or x equals minus 2, therefore x is equal to 3 over 2. So therefore at two zero points are going to be at minus 2 and at 3 over 2. Those two points there are 0. And again we've got that equal sign, so I'm immediately going to put in my colored in circles. So I don't forget that I have to include these numbers, okay? Otherwise it's a bit of a problem. Okay, right, so now Let's have a look at it. We want a number, oh sorry, I said I'd do the parabola first. So the parabola then is a happy parabola and it goes up and it comes down like this. And we want the values that are smaller than or equal to zero. So this time it's gonna be the things that are below the line, so it's the joining of the dots, okay? And we'd say x has gotta be smaller than or equal to three over two, or it's gonna be bigger than or equal to minus two, okay? And that's it. That's how you do the parabola method of this, okay? But now I'm going to quickly show you how to substitute the numbers in any way just to prove it and just to make sure you have both methods, okay? So let's choose a number that's smaller than minus 2. Let's choose 
minus 3. So we can say 2 times minus 3 minus 3. And then we can go minus 3 plus 2. I'm just substituting in minus 3 wherever I see x. So 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, minus 3 is minus 9, it's a negative, right? And a minus 3 plus 2 is a negative, a minus times a minus is a plus. Yay, so that's right, it is above the x-axis. Let's choose a number between two, minus 2 and 3 over 2. Well, let's choose 0, okay? So we've got 2 times 0 minus 3, and then we've got 0 plus 2, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3 is a negative, a negative plus times a positive is a positive, so that there's a negative, and finally any number bigger than 1.5, let's choose 2, so you can go 2 times 2 minus 3, and we can go 2 plus 2, that's 4 minus 3 is going to be positive, 2 times 2 is positive, therefore this is positive as well, and there you go. Okay, let's try something that looks slightly more complicated. Now, if you see this, do you see that um, it look, doesn't look like a trinomial at all? And what's important is that there are x's on both sides. And what is the problem with that? The problem with that is we are trying to solve for this with not having x's on both sides. So we need to get the x's all onto the one side. So I'm going to move everything over the left hand side. So it becomes 3x squared plus x minus 4 is greater than 0. Okay, now I know that some of you might be feeling like, well, shouldn't we change the sum, sign of this because of the fact that it we move things across. You only change this sign, this inequality, if you divide or times by a negative. That's the only time you change signs. Otherwise, they stay the same. That's the only time, okay? So all we've done is taken it across, so we've plussed it across and minus it across, so therefore we do not need to change the signs at all, okay? I mean change the sign. Right, so now we need to factorize again. So we've got the coefficient of x squared are 3 and 1. The coefficient of 4 are 2 and 2 and 4 and 1 and 1 and 4. Okay, and remember we're cross multiplying, the signs have to be different and they have to add up to a 1. Okay, they have to add up to a 1. Right, so let's try this, okay. 3 times 2 is 6 and 1 times 2 is 2. That definitely doesn't add up to a 1, so that doesn't work, okay. 3 times 1 is 3 and 1 times 4 is 4. That works, so we don't need this one again. So let's rewrite this. We've got 3 and 1 and 4 and 1, okay? And we want it to add to positive, so we're going to go minus 3 plus 4, okay? 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, 1 times positive 4 is 4, and we add them up to get a plus 1. But then remember that we write from left to right. So we've got 3x plus 4, x minus 1. 3x plus 4x minus 1. So we want to find these are now our markers. That's what actually equals naught. So it's going to be where x is equal to minus 4 over 3 or x equals 1. And if you don't like this, you can write it as minus 1 and a third. It's not a big deal, okay, if that gives you a better sense of what this number is. So this is going to be minus 4 over 3, and this here is 1. And if you want to, I'm just going to write minus 1 and a third, okay, just to help you a bit. And we know that those points are going to be 0. And remember that it's not included. It's just an inequality. It's just a greater than sign. So therefore, it's open circles over here at the bottom. Okay, right. Now, if you want to do it using the parabola method, which we can use just for this example, you can see that it's a happy graph. So therefore, it's going to do 
this very untidily, but it's going to do that, okay? And what do they want? They want when the whole expression is greater than zero. So therefore they want across here and they want across there, okay? They want when the whole expression is above the x axis, okay? So therefore we could say that x has to be smaller than minus four over three, or x has got to be greater than one. Okay, happy with that. Right, ah, this looks a bit more interesting. So you have got x divided by x minus three is smaller than two, but x is not equal three. Okay, now you've got to understand something very carefully here and very clearly here. You may not get rid of the denominator here. You may not, and the reason is because of this x. Okay, let me explain it to you. If x is, say for x, for example, x is four. Okay, let's let x equal four. Okay, then do you agree that this number here becomes a positive number? It's four minus three is one. So then if you multiply it across, this sign stays a smaller than. Okay, but if we let x equal to two, then it becomes two minus three, which is minus one, which means that when we multiply it across, this sign changes to a po positive sign, changes to a bigger than, okay? So therefore, you cannot get rid of a denominator which has a variable in it when you have an inequality. Okay, let's try again. You cannot get rid, cannot multiply out. You cannot multiply by a denominator with a variable across an inequality and inequality. You just can't. It's just not cool. Well, it's not just not cool. It doesn't make sense because you don't know if that's, that thing here, the whole of this, is going to be bigger than or smaller than um, zero and if it's bigger than it's fine but if it's smaller than it's not fine and so you just can't so what do we have to do we actually have to end up with a fraction that has a denominator in it okay so what do we do first things first is we always have to have zero on the one side so we're going to take the two across so we're going to go x over x minus three minus two is smaller than zero. And the only reason they're telling us that x does not equal three is because then you'd be dividing by zero and that is not possible either. Okay, so now what do we do? We can't possibly do this if it is two different terms. We need one term. So we get a common denominator of x minus three. So that's easy, this just is x minus, remember this implies that it's 2 over 1, so 1 goes into x minus 3, x minus 3 times, so we times it by the tops, so becomes 2 times x minus 3, is all smaller than 0. We need to multiply at the top, so it becomes x minus 2x, and minus times minus is a plus, so it becomes plus 6, all over x minus 3 is smaller than 0. So then we can add like terms, we get minus x plus 6 all over x minus 3 is smaller than 0. Okay, and now is the time which we really need our number lines. Okay, right? And we need to find the values that would make this expression equal 0. Well, we've already discussed the fact that if x equals 3, this is going to the denominator equals 0. So if x equals 3, the denominator equals 0, right? You've got minus x plus 6. If we let that equal 0, then minus x would equal minus 6, so x equals 6, okay? So do you agree our markers are at 3 and at 6? But if x equals 3, the whole of this becomes invalid. So therefore, and your teachers might have either taught you to do a question mark or a cross. I was taught a cross, you guys might have been taught a question mark, okay? The point is that that's not possible, it's not an option, okay? And it equals naught at 6.
Okay, so now we know that this cannot equal 3 and it cannot equal 6. It cannot equal 3 because it makes the whole expression invalid and it cannot equal 6 because it's just an inequality, there's no equal line. Okay, now do we want? We want the whole expression to be smaller than zero and this is where substitution plays a role and why you can, and this example is one where you can't just use the parabola method. Okay, and that's why I was stressing so much about using the parabola method. So let's look at this. Okay, let's choose a number that's smaller than three. I'm going to choose zero. So I'm going to go minus zero plus six is just a positive. Zero minus three is a negative. A plus divided by minus is a minus. Okay, now normally I know you guys get used to going plus minus plus or minus plus minus because usually it does look like a parabola and then it will have that same shape. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a negative parabola or if it's a positive parabola, it tends to go plus minus plus or minus plus minus. Okay, this thing is not a parabola, so you can't just assume it's minus plus minus. You actually have to substitute in values over here and over here. So so choosing a number between 3 and 6, I'm going to choose 4. So I'm going to go minus 4 plus 6 is positive. Over 4 minus 3 happens to be positive. So positive divided by positive is a positive. Hmm. And then any number bigger than 6, I'm going to choose 7. So I'm going to go minus 7 plus 6 over 7 minus 3 is a negative over positive, which is a negative. So amazingly, it does follow that pattern, but it's not a parabola. Okay, and now what did we want? We wanted the values for which the whole of this expression was smaller than zero. So it's going to be that way and that way. So we'd say for x is smaller than three or x is bigger than six. Okay. I hope you guys have got that. Okay, so I'm not going to carry on with this. I'm going to love and leave you. But if you want to try this for Wednesday, because our next lesson on our maths in grade 11 is on Wednesday at the same time, then take a screenshot of this. It's x squared minus 4 over x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. And try and solve it. Do it for like, not for homework. I mean, it really is like a five-minute question. And then we will go through it on Wednesday. Have a great day.